G'day guys, Prospector Pete here again. Um, I've had a few people asking me how I depopulate my boards. Uh, it's a pretty simple method, most of you probably already know of it, but I'm going to show you anyway. Uh, I'd like to have a go cover all different aspects on my channel. Um, basically I've got a heat gun. I have tried different guns. I used to have a really good Makita one, but that blew up. Um, and I've had a few of these, they're cheap and nasty, but they do the job. Basically, you're just going to turn it on for a bit and get it nice and hot. The Makita used to heat up really fast. So it might be noisy, but uh, I'll try and give you a rundown before I start it. Um, pair of pliers. Hold on to my board. See, I've got all these IC chips and so on on here. Um, I can selectively pick out what I, don't, I want and don't want. So, you know, I'm not interested in these things. I just basically... Get it nice and close, move it around, like that, heat it up until the solder melts and then they fall off. Um, one of the advantages to doing this is when you're doing pins, um, there's usually there's holes in the board and the pin goes in the hole and then they're soldered in there. Now if you've got a hammer chisel or something and you scrape them off and, and break the pins off level with the board, you're, you're missing out on all that gold, for starters, that's in the hole. Um, also, you're taking all the solder with it, whereas this way, I mean, you still get some solder, but because it's melted, um, and you, you, you heat it up and tap this on the side of the container, they fall out, and a lot of the solder, not all of it, but a lot of it will just um, fall into the bucket here. So it kind of cleans up your pins at the same time. You still do, do need to use HCL to get rid of any remnants, but it gets, it gets a lot of the, the solder off. And I just uh, find what I want, which chips I want, all of them obviously, heat them all up, nothing on that side, and then I just throw this in the bin, I've got a, a, box, a box there for the bin, and a box here for gold, so if I pick up, this one's got gold on it, not much, but there's gold on it, um, this one's got gold all over it. So I'd heat the chips up, but because there's gold on there, right, any boards that have got gold, I take everything off, because I want to treat the board, and I don't want to have all that rubbish on there. So I'll heat everything on here, and I'll scrape it all off. Same both sides. If there's no gold on the board, then I'm selective, I just take what I want, and throw the rest away. So, phone boards, there's a little bit of gold on them, some nice chips. Some pretty good chips on the phone boards. And with the motherboards, um, it's easier to get these off. I don't know how you would do it without a heat gun. But with the heat gun, I can heat this up and it just tap it and it drops off nice and easy. Same with these. I, I tend to not worry about these anymore. I've got a whole pile of these that I'm trying to sell on eBay. I've had no buyers. No, no one wants them. Um, but I'll just keep piling them up. Someone will want them one day. Um, I just find that for the chemicals it takes and the time, uh, I'm, I'm just over them. I just want to do chips and any really good gold coated pins. Um, so on this I'll get me BGA, I'll get all my IC chips. Um, I'll heat these up and get them off so I can pile them up and see if I can sell them. Or maybe one day when I run out and I've got nothing to do, I might process them then. Uh, but I'll get yeah, chips, I'll get this off. And uh, no, that's it, and then I'll, I'll probably take these out, because I do pull these apart, these ones here. There's usually gold pins inside. And this one's got gold pins, so I'll take these off. Um, this one here, you can see has got gold pins, but I find some of these have got a thicker coating than others. So if they're not a very thick coating, I'll put them aside for sale. If they're pretty good, I'll keep them and do them myself. And, you know, just selectively pick out what you want. Chuck them in the box. These aren't bad, they've usually got some pretty good pins, only one sided coated, but they're, they're still pretty good. Nice chip there, and uh, so yeah, just, you'll see, but I'll, I'll start it up now, it'll be a bit noisy. Just give it a few minutes to heat up. This is off a TV, or it's a, a laptop screen or something like that. There's not a lot of rubbish on there, 
but because there's gold on there I want the whole lot clean this side's nothing on there but this side here has got some little chips on there MLCC's another chip there little tiny chips there I just want to get the whole thing nice and smooth you know as much as I can off so I can I can treat the board So I've got my pliers, because it can get pretty hot. Find somewhere to hold it. Nothing on this side. So what I do is I tend to, on most things like this, I'll heat from this side, so I'm melting the solder, rather than this side melting all the plastic and ending up with a mess trying to, trying to sort out. Now sometimes they still heat up, but it's easier this way. So you'll see the main pins where they that unit itself is attached to the board and then the little pins where the wires are soldered to the board so just heat that general area up tap it on the side of the box and they generally fall in some take a bit more effort than others it's a bit windy today which uh, can be a downside because it's blowing the hot air away it cools the board down a lot faster uh, I try and do this on a day where it's not windy but I need the IC chips because I'm going to pyrolyze those today and treat those. And I've got a stack already, but there's a lot on all these boards. So that's why I've started doing it now, to get the IC chips off. Now initially this does take a while. It's still heating up, and the board's heating up. But once you get going, it's pretty quick. Yeah, I can smell the fumes, not fumes, but I can smell the, um, it, can, it, can, it gives off a smell, it's not bad for your health or anything, but you can smell the, the board heating up, um, uh, I don't know how to explain it, right, I can see the solder starting to bubble, and there you go, that easy. You'll see that the holes are clean. You can see through the holes. You've just taken everything, the pin and all. I don't know if you can see that. You can't keep the gun in one area too long or the board will start to catch fire. So you move it around. One off. This one's nearly off. There it goes. Done. That easy. With this part here, I find it easier to heat the back. You'll see there's a square with nothing on it, all in the middle there, and then there's metal around it. That's where it's joined to the board. So I'll heat this part here. I'll turn the board around first so I can hold this in. Nice and close because of the wind, I don't want to blow all the heat off it. And the wind's coming directly at the board, so I'm sort of sheltering the, the wind by holding the board in this direction. And these little pins around the outside, you've got to melt those because that's where it all sticks to it. It's not the best gun, a good one like Makita, and that, was, that used to get so hot and it was really fast. Well, these cheap uh, guns, they take a bit longer. But you pay for what you get, I guess. And what I used to do, and I couldn't work out why I was going through so many guns, is I would, once I've heated it up, I'd put it over the board and I'd hit it like this, hit it with this, and, I went, and it was breaking the fi filament inside here. I went through about three guns before I realised so now I hit the board on there, rather than hitting this on here, and I haven't blown another gun up since. It's probably common sense, but I'm a bit of a dick, so...
Done. That easy. It's really that simple. So now I can go to the, the chips. I don't want that rubbish one, but I'll get the BGA. Doesn't take very long, just put a bit of heat on it. And once you've got a bit of heat on there, you can sort of use the, the end of the gun to just slide it. See it comes off? That's when you know it's ready, it slides. So I've got some chips here, hit these up. So it's getting a lot quicker now because the gun's really heated up. And, I, and I'll, just, I'll just move them with the end of the gun like that. See it's come off? That didn't take long. It's really that simple. I chuck the box, the boards that are useless into one box, boards with gold on in another box, so everything's all separated. And there you go. I'll leave that there for a second. Now, I have everything drop into this tub. I don't know, I'll, I'll get this out of the tripod one sec. Okay, so everything falls into this tub. I've got a tub here which I'm collecting IC chips. And then later on I'll just go through and pick out all the different things that I want. So these will go in one pile, these will go in one pile, this will go in the trash, these will go in a pile. I'll sort it all out. Um, pick out any ram that's fallen in there. Even some little ones, I get all the small ones. They've all got gold in them. Pick out my BGAs. And uh, sort it all out. And then I end up with a whole pile of what I call crumbs. Now these are a combination of IC chips. The tiny, tiny, tiny little ones. I can see one right there on top. Um, copper coils. Gold pins that fall out on their own. Uh, crystal oscillators. MLCCs, you name it, it's all in there. And I can't be bothered with it. I think the best way to treat this would be just to heat the whole lot up into a molten ball, make it into shot, and then treat it that way. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer this for sale if anyone wants it. Um, I want $10 a kilo, which isn't very much. You'll get a lot of silver from all the MLCCs. You'll get a lot of other metals as well. And then you also get some solder in decent pieces like that, which if you saw my other video, I use these to make stannous chloride. So if anybody wants some of this, $10 a kilo plus shipping, and you can have it. I'll just scoop up big piles of it. I've got to do something with it. Otherwise, I'll just store it one day, and I might have run out of things to do. Um, you really need a furnace, I've got a furnace, but if you're going to be interested in it, you're going to need a furnace to really cook it into a, a molten ball and then pour it into some water to make shot and that's probably the best way and then just treat it with nitric acid. So that's what I do, I'll pick all this stuff out later and then you're done. Alright guys, so it's only a short video, just wanted to show you and uh, thanks for watching, see ya.